right. Welcome to the Rock Your Dream Body and Dream Life interview series. Today, I am talking to Brie Seely. So to introduce Brie, uh, she is passionate about supporting women to live on purpose and be inspirational women in their lives every single day. She speaks, writes, and mentors women to connect with their unique passion for life and to build inspirational lives for themselves. Brie is also the founder of the Inspirational Woman Project, a movement which aims to tell the stories of every woman and the co-founder of the Amplify, Amplify Collective, an unnetworking movement, which I love, for women. Uh, she is a regular contributor for the Huffington Post, and she's been featured on the Today Show, Kickstarter, PBS, and Free Enterprise. So welcome, Bree. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to talk about this today. Um, you know, just to kind of connect on the topic of rocking your dream body and your dream life, you know, in this series, we're talking a lot about health. We're talking about how to break free from these unhealthy self-sabotage type of behaviors related to our bodies. But I think that it's such an important conversation to talk about the bigger picture. And that's why I wanted to have you on today because really our body is this vessel for us to be able to go out and experience life fully. And so today that's kind of where I'm thinking our conversation will, will go so that we can give women this picture of what it looks like to really be connected with themselves and in tune so that they can live their best lives, right? Totally. So why don't you start out by kind of sharing your story about how you began living what you consider to be your dream life? So it really started, I mean, so I've been looking a lot at numerology lately and 20, what are we in? 2016 is a nine year, which is a completion year. Mm -hmm. And so it, it looks through the past like nine years of your life to really see what's happened and what cycle you will be completing. So nine is a completion year. So I've been looking back over the past few weeks at, you know, where was I at in 2008? What decisions was I making? What situations was I facing? And how was I basically at the beginning of a cycle then that is now concluding this year to then restart a new cycle next year? And so, you know, 2008, I was in a relationship that was fine. He's a really lovely man, really great human being. And it wasn't fulfilling my super passionate side. Like it wasn't fulfilling my deep, um, deep engagement that I feel like I need in life in order to be happy. And so it was really around that time that I left a relationship and started really facing the fact that I didn't like my job and started really facing the fact that while I was running a business that I had passion in, I wasn't really happy with how it was playing out or what that was looking like either. And so it was two years ago that I really um, left my day job, uh, started the Inspirational Woman Project, which then led to me closing the business that I wasn't terribly happy about, and basically restarting my entire life a year ago to create this whole new expansive movement that I have seen even just in the past six months. Um, and so what I've found is that when you really truly commit to your dream life, things can unfold really quickly and really beautifully, but you have to be open and willing to allowing it to happen. Yes. Oh my gosh. So many things there. I feel like 2008 was such a pivotal year for so many people because of everything that, is that a little kitty? <laughs> I yeah. love it. My cats are attention whores. They usually make it into almost every video that I do. Oh, that's so fun. Um, I feel like 2008 was such a year for so many people in having, because, you know, like things changed in the, like, in general in business. Lots of companies were, were laying people off, and it just gave a lot of people this wake-up call, including myself. That was a year for me where I started realizing the same thing, like, I was in the corporate world and I just realized this, like my ladder is leaning up against the wrong building. Like I am not doing that. I love that. Lights me up. And I think a lot of women feel like that where they're like, I'm just going through the day to day stuff, trying to get by. And I don't really know how to do something different. Like I don't know what that first step even looks like. So what would you say to that woman who's like, I want to do more. I feel like I'm not really living life to it's my fullest, but 
but I don't know what to do. I mean, I really think that is the first step is truly acknowledging that that's where you're at. You know, for so long for me, I was like the ostrich that buried its head in the sand that was like, oh, if I don't look at it, you know, it doesn't exist. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, so really acknowledging it is the first step. And then I would say the second step is creating space in your life to allow the universe to drop in whatever messaging or whatever you need to know then what the next step is for you. And so for me, you know, I didn't create that space in my life and the universe created it for me, which is the brilliant thing that if you, if you know something and you're not willing to do something about it, the universe will do something for you. Yeah. And so what it looked like for me was getting an email from my employer saying, Hey, um, you know, we just want to remind you that we're going to be cutting your pay in half as of four days ago. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so I call it my like universal two by four moment. Like I knew for a long time that I hated that job and I didn't want to be doing it, but I wasn't willing to take the action necessary or create the space in my life to figure out what else was there for me. Yeah. And so it was the second that that happened, then it was like five hours later that Ariana Huffington invited me to start writing for the Huffington Post. Mm-hmm. And it was like a few days later that I, I opened up to the idea of turning the Inspirational Woman Project into a book and a Kickstarter. And it was like a few months later, I was on the Today Show. And like all of these things unfolded for me because all of a sudden the space was created for it to exist. But if your life is jam packed, I always like to use the closet analogy that like, you know, if your closet's packed and you literally cannot fit another hanger in your closet, but you want to go shopping, what do you do? you have to clear out some old stuff to make room for the new and life is the same way. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny how often we see, like we have these things happen that in the, in the moment it feels like the worst thing ever, like being laid off or having your pay cut or something like that. But if you can look for that silver lining and you can say like, okay, I get it. Like I get the message. I'm supposed to slow down. I'm supposed to refocus. I'm supposed to just be still for a little bit because for up until now I've been go, go, go and never really uh, being very conscious. Then you can start to see how the universe really does conspire. Like the universe, God, whoever, you know, whatever your higher power is that you are connected to, it's conspiring to our benefit. And if we open ourselves up to receive that guidance, it's there for us. Totally. The other step I would say that is required in order to allow that to come in is truly making a commitment because the longer that you sit on the fence and you can't decide which side you want to go on, the longer the universe doesn't really know what to send you. Mm -hmm. But the second that you commit to saying, this is what I want in my life, the second the universe will start sending you all of the magic in that area. But if you're divided and the universe doesn't know which way to go with you, then it can't send you anything. Yeah. And you're not open. Like your channel is not open to receiving that guidance. Yeah. So would you say like to the woman who is working in the corporate world and she has kids and she's so jam packed, her schedule is crazy, but she's like, I want to do something for her. Is it about starting to clear out the schedule or is it about just saying, like you said, I'm open, show me the guidance, show me the way, and then just waiting for the answer. I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I always recommend, so for me now, I spend three hours every day with space in my schedule. Mm. And I get that that's like, that's a huge commitment for a lot of people. It's as simple as starting with like 10 or 15 minutes a day. If you're able to get up 10 or 15 minutes before your kids get up and just truly spend 10 or 15 minutes in silence, with yourself, creating that space, Mm -hmm. things will start dropping in. And then it's also committing to saying, all right, I don't know what's in front of me. I don't know what it looks like, but I I am truly committed to writing a new story for myself. Mm. I love that. Yes. And I think that's, that's like, you know, the basic start. Obviously then it takes, it could take time. It could not take time. You know, for me, the big opening came five hours after I kind of told my employer to get screwed, you know? <laughs> um, so it just really depends, I guess, on how open you are and how, how committed you are to making that space every day. Yeah. And I think that openness is such a mindset shift. Like the power of our mindset 
the power of how we look at our situation. You know, we can, I, I like to talk about putting on different glasses. Like you take these glasses of disempowerment off and you put on the glasses of empowerment and you look at that same situation and you see something different. So can you talk a little bit about mindset and, and you know, this idea of I am statements? I know that you're big on that because I think that's huge for women. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we do with the Amplify Collective is really getting women to kind of remove the job title thing. So, you know, you, as you introduced earlier, it's the unnetworking thing. Mm -hmm. So the I am statements of, you know, I am, you know, we've been talking about corporate employees. So I am a corporate employee. I am statements are so huge. I am literally means God. And so by saying I am a corporate employee, you're reaffirming just constantly that that is your story. And the second that you can kind of take that off and start looking at who you are outside of that is really when your mindset will start to shift and when the universe will then start reflecting that outside of your being as well. Um, and so for me, you know, the, the business I was running is I was a fashion designer. And for so long, that was my identity. And I got, mess I got a message a little over a year ago that was like, what are you doing? This is not where you're supposed to be putting your talents in life. And so I trust when, thing, when messages like that come through, I just trust them. I do not question them. I'm like, I don't know what's on the other side, but I trust that that's exactly what I needed to hear. And I'm going to move forward with that being my truth. But it was the second that all of a sudden I was like, well, I'm not a fashion designer anymore. Mm -hmm. So what am I? And it really took me a good nine months to kind of wrap my head around that mindset shift of, well, if I'm taking myself out of this fashion designer box, who am I in the world? What gifts do I have? How do I contribute to women's lives? And what does that look like on a daily basis? And so, like I said, in creating space, you know, it was taking myself out of that box and really truly opening up to whatever magic was there. I didn't know what it looked like, but I trusted enough to know that the universe would show me if I was open to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's knowing that first step, like that's all you really need to see is that first step and just knowing like, okay, once I get to that next step, then I'll have a different perspective. It's like little stepping stones. And then once yeah. you get to the next step, you can see a little bit further. I always talk about it as like following breadcrumbs. Exactly. I like, love that. Yeah. You don't, you know, you can know maybe what you want, like the end to kind of look like, but we can never fully know from the perspective that we're at. Mm -hmm. So whatever perspective you have right now is what got you to your present moment. Yes. So in order to get to a future moment, you're going to need a new perspective because you can't create newness from your current perspective. So um, I totally just lost my, my train of thought. So you can kind of have an idea of what you want that future to look like, but you're never going to fully know until your perspective shifts. Yeah. So I talk a lot about like, like embracing your future and like looking at your life from your future perspective. And I know we'll be getting into this in a little bit, but it's like, what would your future self say about the decisions you're making in your life today, right now? If you're faced with a decision right now, your current self might look at it from a certain perspective, but how does your future self look at it? And which one is going to get you to the place that you want to be going quicker? Yeah, let's talk about that. So you call that fu future pacing? Is that what it is? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, I, I do, and I'll be gifting this later, but um, a meditation where you can literally start connecting with your future. Mm -hmm. So you get to sit down and you get to interview your future self. Because what if you could start embracing aspects of who she is in your present moment? And you start looking at the situations, you start looking at the opportunities from that lens, instead of like you said, the current glasses that you're wearing. Yes. And I feel like that's so, like, when I think about what I knew then, you know, when you think back to any particular time in your life, you just don't know. You, you have to expand into that person that can handle the lifestyle, the part, you know, like who you want to be, but you, but only through experience, do you learn how to handle that? And I think yeah. that's, that's the thing that we don't often give ourselves permission to travel that road. We think that we're just supposed to be perfect or just know, or not make mistakes, mistakes, you know, and 
really that's all such a crucial, important part of the process. Totally. I mean, I'm, I have probably learned more in all of my life and business from the mistakes yeah. than from doing it right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I love this idea of, you know, yes, you have to be where you are today. And what does it look like to kind of start embracing that future self and even bringing in little things about her? Like um, my best friend did the meditation and her future self had, she's currently blonde. Her future self had dark hair and no bangs. And so all of a sudden she's growing out her bangs, mm -hmm. like little things that can like bring you closer to who she is. Yeah. Yeah. And giving yourself that permission to experiment. Cause I think that's the thing, whether we're talking about, um, our, our body image or our bank account or whatever, if we, if we come at these goals from a mindset of not good enoughness or not there yet, then it's, it's blocking us from really being in our full potential and really being open to receive all of that guidance versus if we can guide ourselves from a mindset of nourishment and self-care and self-discovery and experimentation, then it opens you up. And then you're like, oh, I get it. Like every single thing that's happening is for my greatest good because it's teaching me and it's helping me to expand. Yeah. So I watched, I saw the most beautiful video and I don't remember who it was or anything, but it was this woman, I think she was a stay at home mom and she hated her body. And so she decided she was going to commit to being in a, in a, what are they called? The bodybuilding competitions. Mm -hmm. And so she did, she completely transformed everything. She got to the bodybuilding competition her, the judges told her she had a perfect body. And the thing was that between who she was before and who she was then, she, her mindset hadn't shifted. Mm -hmm. So everything she believed about herself was still the same thing she believed about herself when she had the perfect body. Yeah. And so the thing that I love is like, if we were to look in the future, especially, you know, I know you deal a lot with the, the body like stuff. If we were to look into the future and say, all right, my future self, what, what does she believe? about who she is in the world? What does she believe about her body? What does she love? What's her favorite thing about her body? And how does she treat her body? Yeah. Then once you know those things about your future self, how do you start incorporating those things into your life now? Because if you know that your future self loves her curvy hips, then if you were to start loving your curvy hips now, then all of a sudden you're bridging that gap and you're creating more from the empowerment glasses mm -hmm. than from the disempowerment glasses. And yeah. this isn't to say, you know, it's not a perfect journey. We all have days or moments where, you know, I love my curvy hips and I have days where I'm like, uh, <laughs> why am I, why do I have these hips? You know, like we all have little moments. It's not about being perfect, but it's about having that general belief and awareness that is so in line with who you want to be in the future. Because if you're not shifting your mindset in accordance with the external changes, then nothing is going to change in your life. You're not going to feel different. Yeah. I think it's Abraham Hicks that says, happy with what is, eager for more. Like learning how to really appreciate right now and know that, of course, as a human being, like expansion, you know, wanting more is part of being alive. That's what makes us be interested in life. So it's like an important part of the equation, but at the same time, it's not like life doesn't begin until we get there. Yeah. It's, like it's happening right now. Cause there is no there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause, Cause there's always more. Yeah. The second we're there, then we've shifted the point to there. Yeah. And then the second, once we get there, then we've shifted the point again. There is no there. There's always a new goal. There's no finish line. Which is why, you know, I, the power of now, I mean, that book is phenomenal. That book blows my mind. Like I can literally only read three pages at a time because it's just so much, but yeah. like being in the present and believing the things and being the kind of woman you want to be now, like there is no tomorrow. There really isn't. And that's the hardest thing. Like, so when I'm working with my clients, when I'm talking with women, I feel like we all get it. Like, oh, of course I want to enjoy right now. I want to be present in this moment. I want to set these goals and come at them from a mindset of nourishment or self-discovery. But it's so 
like enticing for us to be stuck in that problem solving mode. So why do you think that, like, why do you think that we block ourselves? Like, why do you think that we stay in that mode of just go, 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 thinking that that's the answer, even when we know logically, this is what will help? Honestly, I think a lot of it is, is just cultural kind of training, you know, that's, that's the energy that our world and our planet has operated off of for so long. And it is shifting, but Mm -hmm. there's, you know, we're kind of caught in the middle right now between what was and what will be. And so I, I always, I feel like we're at this, just this really interesting place in history where we get to create this new paradigm, but we're not quite, quite in the new paradigm yet. And so it's this really interesting dance that we're all having to do right now in the world is kind of straddle, like I was talking about earlier, straddling that fence. Yeah. And, and it's really making a commitment to, do you want to stay in the old paradigm of the doing, 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 or are you ready to commit to the new paradigm, mm-hmm. which involves being in the present moment and it involves the mindfulness, but it really truly takes a commitment. Yeah. And it's, it's almost like it has to, for some people, sometimes it has to get almost so bad that you just give up, you know, and you're just like, I, I'm ready, like, show me the way I'm so ready to just open myself up to thinking differently and changing and looking, you know, at this with a different perspective than I ever have before. Because like you said, it's like, we're conditioned, we're so conditioned, we are celebrated, it's almost like people wear this busyness or stress or lack of sleep as a badge of honor. I just wrote a blog about this. Yeah, yeah, other people celebrate that or they give us props for being so busy. And when you think about it, you're like, that's not where I'm trying to go. Like, I don't just, I, I don't want to be busy all the time. I want to feel good. And so when you shift that and you start saying like, how can I guide myself from how I want to feel versus trying to measure up to these impossible levels, then it changes everything. And I think you said it beautifully before. I mean, that it's really that place of surrender. Yeah. And really that place of like letting go and releasing. Like, so to be super candid, I've, I actually haven't shared this story ever publicly. I mean, the people closest to me know, and I'm about to make a video about it and release it. But um, December 31st of, I mean, just four months ago, I had been pushing and pushing and pushing my business so hard. And I was trying to make it work and trying to make it happen. And, you know, just being in that hyper-masculine state of like, this has to work. And just like, um, that I got to December 31st and I couldn't pay my rent. Mm -hmm. And I was out, you know, picking up waitressing applications. And I was like, all right, universe, if this is what it has to look like right now, then I guess that this is what it has to look like. And I basically just did the, threw my hands up in the air and surrendered and said, I don't know the answer. I have no idea what this looks like and I just can't care right now because me putting more energy into this clearly isn't working. So I went into January 1st, I had to go to my landlord and ask if I could pay my rent in two installments. And from that place, I made as much in quarter one as I made in all of last year. Like I am going to probably more than quadruple my income this year over last year. Yeah. Just because I was like, you know, screw it. I literally cannot push anymore. Yeah. I can't care. I can't control the how. I can't do it. And we're so afraid to do that, but there's so much power in that because you it's like you it's almost like you're like trying to pull this boulder along and when you finally let go of the boulder, you like slingshot into your power, into your creative ideas, into this, this mode of receiving. And I've had that happen too, so many times. Like I have so many references of times where even moving out here to California, I didn't have a plan. Like I kind of had a plan, but not really. And then you get here and you're just open and you're just in the eyes appreciating the parrots and the flowers and the way that like it smelled so good and just being in that happiness zone putting more attention on that than on my fear of like, what's not, how am I going to make this happen? You know, my ex-husband and I at the time trying to figure out like, okay, what does this look like? And it wasn't easy. There was lots of things like lots of contrast and stuff that was happening. But I think when you let go of this expectation of how it's supposed to happen and you just 
you're just like, show me the way, then stuff shows up and, and things happen in ways far better than you could ever orchestrate yourself, right? Totally. Like you probably didn't know any of this, these things that added up to that income would happen, but they totally. just showed up. And in the meantime, you know, that the income was great. And I got my dream office, the office I've been dreaming of for the last three years since I moved to LA. I have my dream office now. I, um, my business partner and I totally just transformed our entire business. And in that business, we're about to make 30 times this month what we made any previous month before. Um, I got a book agent. I like all of these amazing things happened because I stopped worrying and I stopped squeezing. I literally felt like I was squeezing the life out of my business. Mm -hmm. And the more, again, that you make that contraction or that you hold things and like aren't willing to open up to the space, the, like the universe literally can't get anything in. It's, a, it's so, like a tight fist. Like when yeah. you have a t and then you open up your tight fist, there's like all this space now to fill for and, all these good things. You know, as much as, I didn't know where my bill, how my bills were being paid. I felt amazing. Mm -hmm. Like life felt so good. I was having fun. More opportunities were coming to me. I was saying yes to more things. And it was just like, I, it was just such a beautiful unfolding. And I know, I know that it's a really hard thing to do. Yeah. It is hard to let go of that control. And I get it. I've been there more times than just that one. That was just the most recent and probably the biggest one of my life. But it's a place that, you know, if you're really truly committed to living your dream life, it's almost a place you have to get to and you have to get there on your own. Yeah. Come being comfortable with the uncertainty, like being happy with the uncertainty. You think about anyone who's successful, they don't have everything figured out all the time. They're open uh, and they're okay with some level of risk. And that's one of those things that as you get more comfortable with that, then you can live life and have an amazing life and your dream life, even with uncertainty, even with not having everything all figured out. Yeah. And even in that uncertainty for me, I found that I had this, I had like a certain amount of certainty in the uncertainty. Yeah. I started looking back and I was like, have I ever not been taken care of? Yeah. Have I ever been dropped flat on my face and not supported in some way? And the answer was no. Mm -hmm. So even though I didn't know what it looked like, I was like, you know, I just have to trust that the universe has this mm -hmm. and that, that I'm willing to let that go and let the fact that it knows more than I do. Like, I'm, I'm a pretty smart person, but like, come on, we don't know everything as human beings. So... I just had to release it all. And really, I mean, I don't know where I'd be today if I, you know, hadn't hit my bottom in, in December. Yeah. And that's like, so when we talk about the universe and for people who are more familiar with talking about God, I mean, really it's this, this, this connection to our spirituality, this connection to something that makes us realize and be conscious of the fact that we are more than these human beings just walking around trying to pay our bills. Like there is a piece of us that is so much bigger than this. And when you allow yourself to connect to that and, and really receive that energy, that, 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 um, wisdom, you know, and that's the connection with your intuition, which is something I'm going to talk about in a, a, several other interviews then it all makes sense because you know, like, okay, it's not my job to figure it all out. It's my job to just show up and to be open to receiving that guidance that's always there for me. Always. And like you said before, being that vessel. Yes. Like that's really, truly what we all are. Yeah. You know, the Inspirational Woman Project, I, you know, I, it's mine. Like I'm the founder of it. I take zero credit for that. Mm -hmm. I was cutting fabric one day and it totally came through me from source or from God or from, you know, the universe or whatever, whoever calls it. Yeah. And so remembering that we're vessels and that, yes, we have these circumstances outside of us, but at the end of the day, the closer we can live to source or to the universe or to God, the more expansion and the more opportunities that it is going to provide to us in our lives. Yeah. It's so true. It is. It really is. And so 
in order for us to be connected to that, in order for us to sort of practice that muscle, we need to sort of have what I call self-care practices. So like, what would you say, you know, what would be a normal day for you of giving yourself that time, like those three hours or, or whatever it is, like how do you open yourself up? What are some of your ways that you do that? So the first thing for me is that it's a commitment. Like I commit to two to three hours a day of self-care. No matter what, if I'm on vacation, if I'm at home, if it's a weekend, if it's a weekday, two to three hours a day of self-care. For me, what works, you know, I, I'm a huge proponent of the Miracle Morning. I love Hal. I love what he's written about. I think it's great. And when I read it, I had a really hard time with it because it says, you know, you block out one hour and you do 10 minutes of this and 10 minutes of this and 10 minutes of this. And I tried that and I couldn't do it. And so for me, what works in terms of self-care is I block off that, that time frame, and then I allow whatever I need that day to just bubble up. Mm. So there are some days when I get up and read, you know, I do my five minute journal. I have cat kitty time with my cat. I do <laughs> yoga. I take a walk. I have tea on my rooftop underneath the sun amongst the palm trees. You know, some mornings I will get up and literally get out my coloring book and color for three hours. Like I just, whatever I need that morning is what I do. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it involves dance parties or calling my mom or making breakfast or, you know, it's just, I, I found that I need that flexibility and I need that flow within the structure in order for it to work for me. Yeah. And that's the feminine. So, I mean, how, and I'll, I'll link to the book. It's called the miracle morning, right? The book. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll link to that, but that's like, he's got a very masculine approach to it, which does have a lot of, you know, that structure that's very um, regimented for you, it sounds like you're leaning more towards the feminine side where you're giving yourself the freedom to do whatever feels best for you in that time. So for someone who has right now, like not a lot of time in their schedule, and, and you mentioned earlier, like all you need is 15 minutes. Do you recommend that they plug that in, you know, to their schedule or, or how could they incorporate some level of what you're talking about into like a jam packed day? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said before, the, the most important thing for me about it was that commitment. And so it's really, truly taking a stand and making yourself a priority. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I found. I have a lot of clients that have tried the miracle morning and are like, oh, I just can't, can't get into it. And what it boils down to is that they're not comfortable making themselves a priority. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's really the first thing is saying yes to you, that you deserve so 15 minutes a day just for you. No kids, no husbands, no business, just you. Mm -hmm. And so it's that commitment. And really I have to, for me, I have to schedule it into my calendar mm -hmm. because that's just how I work. Yeah. But, um, you know, making that non-negotiable and mm -hmm. really committing to that. And then if it looks like you meditate for 15 minutes, then you do that. If it looks like grabbing your cup of coffee and sitting on your back porch and, and just really relishing in the nature around you for 15 minutes, do that. You know, like I said earlier, journaling, reading, doing yoga, taking a walk, whatever that looks like. But um, whatever it is, it's creating that 15 minutes of space, going back to what we talked about at the beginning, to allow the universe to kind of fill it in with the goodness that you want in your life. That space for that intuitive guidance, that source to flow through. Yeah. Yep. And, and I do the same thing. I have it plugged in as a reoccurring event in my calendar every single day, literally 15 minutes of journaling, meditation, whatever I need. And at least that way it's in there. Like at least that way I'm, and, and for some people that means getting up 15 minutes earlier. But if you start your day from that mindset of flow and really getting connected with yourself, then everything works out so much better than if you just get up and go, you know? Yeah. I'm also a big proponent of like what you initiate, like the energy that is initiated in your day, your month, your week, your year, whatever is what persists. And so for me, it's really important to do it first thing in the morning because if I can set up my energy that way, first thing in the morning, then I know that that's the energy that's going to persist throughout my day. You know, I look back to when I had my day job, I would get up last minute, I would rush through my shower, I would make breakfast as quickly as I could, and I would get to my job as quickly as I could, and I would eat breakfast in the car, and it was like this frantic 
you know, just rushing energy. And that's how I lived. That was my life. That was everything about every day of my life. And now I come at life from a much more relaxed and receptive place. And I, I'm not, I don't push anymore because I set my days up to start that way. Yeah. Yeah. And that requires, especially if you have a partner, because I know for me, like my boyfriend is very much that way where he likes to operate in like the go, go, go. He has lots going on. And so for me, when we started, you know, dating, I had to figure out, well, how do I carve out time for me that I need to sort of center myself and really get into that mode of like connection to start my day before we get going. And at the same time, him being that way has helped me to sort of expand beyond the, the like very regimented part of me where it's like, I have to have things a certain way. Like now it's like, Oh yeah, that's right. Things are supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to go out on a weeknight. I'm supposed to, you know, like have these sorts of um, adventures that previously I wasn't exposed to. So I think that there's a balance there. Whereas like he's taught me things and I've taught him, but at the same time, whenever you have other people in your life, whether that's kids, your, your partner, you have to really give yourself that permission, like you said, to put your needs first. Because if you do and when you do, then that's when it allows you to show up as the best version of yourself in that relationship, whether that is with your partner or your kids or, or wherever, you need to have that connection time to yeah. really connect with yourself. And I fully acknowledge, like, you know, I'm single, I live alone. I totally understand that like three hours is a lot. Like I fully recognize that. And I always want to reflect to people that like, well, that works for me. It's not necessarily how it looks, but the fact that you're doing it. Yes. So if it looks for you, like it's only 15 minutes, then make that work for you. Mm -hmm. I fully recognize that when I meet my life partner, like three hours is probably not going to work anymore for me. <laughs> and I'm enjoying every minute of it that I have right now. Yeah. And I'm open to whatever it looks like in the future that flows with whatever my life is like at that point too. Absolutely. That's so. such good advice. And, and we have different phases, like, you know, and, and changes what are, you know, what we're doing at different phases of our lives and what our, fo our focus, our goals they adjust based on what's important to us at that point. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much. This was amazing. And I want to make sure people know how to get in touch with you and find out more if they want to connect with you and, and you know, take this further. Where would you recommend they go? Um, my website is my name, BreeSeely.com. I'm also on all of the major social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, if you look up Bree Seely, I think I'm pretty much the only one, <laughs> which is really great. Um, yeah. But yeah, people can find me on any major social network. I really, I'm very, very highly engaged um, online. So I encourage you to reach out, contact me if you have any questions. Um, I'm also gifting everyone my, my future you meditation yes. um, that I'm assuming you'll put the link in, in all the things. Um, yes. We're going to have the link to the free gift, the amazing free gift for them to take that further. Like you said, the, med the meditation. And do you want to say a few things about it just so that they know what they'll be getting? And it'll say it in the blurb as well. Yeah. So it's just a really great um, way to kind of get started building a relationship with your future self. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. I have a client that's been doing it on and off for the past few months. And it's really interesting when she first started doing it, when she dropped in, she was in this white room with nothing in it. And she just, that was in January, I believe. And she just did it a few weeks ago again. And when she dropped in, she was in this beautiful house. And the way that her future self communicates with her has changed. Mm -hmm. And so the more you start opening up to it, the more that you do it, and the more that you build that relationship with that future self, the easier it's going to be for you to continue that conversation, even when you're not in meditation. So for me now, you know, I've gotten to the point where I can kind of speak to her at any moment and ask her questions and ask for her perspective on things. Um, so if you don't get anything the first time, you're not doing it wrong, do it again. It's like a muscle. It's like yep. building a muscle in the gym. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Bree. This was thank so you. fun. I feel like we could keep talking for another hour, but I'll, I'll, we'll end it there. Just give people enough to get started with. Perfect. So, um, thank you again, and we will talk soon. We'll have everything linked below.